There's not a single hotspot around the world where health professionals were not worried about a potential shortage of PPE. We go through a lot of masks and visors in our department. We have, all our patients are pretty much rule out COVID now, so we have to put on protective equipment for everybody. And we're always concerned that what happens in the second wave and the third wave if we start to run low. So we wanted to make sure that we have an excellent contingency plan uh, for, for PPE. And that's where this mask came in. Dan, Dr. Deckelbaum was one of the guys who came up with the idea initially of using the snorkel masks. And it was, I think when you, when, when I first heard it, I was like, a snorkel mask? <laughs> and so, and then, but when you think about it, even after a very short period of time, you're like, yeah, that makes, that makes sense. So the N95 mask fits over, over a much smaller portion of your face, within which there's a lot more variation person to person. So there are some people for whom there is no fit in an N95. Interestingly, when we fit test individuals, those people who don't fit any other N95, many of them, if not most of them, fit this mask. Usually here would come the snorkel, which would allow you to breathe. So this is the inhale valve, and this is the exhale valve. And pretty much what we've done is replace the snorkel mask with an adapter, uh, with partners from Denmark, in fact, that are working on the same thing, which goes in the place of the snorkel mask. And then we've adapted our filters that we, our N95 filters onto this. The beauty of the masks is that they're reusable. So that significantly lowers the number that you need. We don't need millions of them, um, but we just need enough that we can put through the rotation to make sure that all healthcare practitioners that need it as a contingency have these masks available knowing that the contingency plans are there and that people are looking into making sure that we on the front line are not going to miss it. It's comforting to a lot of us. We're happy that the MUHC and that the foundation is looking to make sure that we have the equipment needed for our care. The foundation really had the vision and some of the donors, including the Hewitt Foundation, Shea Weber from the Montreal Canadiens, uh, the Tsiolis Family Foundation and the Mitch and Anne Marie Garber uh, Foundation, we were able to uh, purchase a significant sum of these masks. It's uh, remarkable to see that kind of interaction between the different sectors of our society, between the foundation and the community supporting all the clinicians in multiple different aspects of the hospital, all multidisciplinary personnel engaged in this project, engineers, physicians, surgeons, intensivists, nurses, respiratory therapists from all different sectors of the hospital and the Research Institute, all working together seamlessly, really, to make this into a reality to have this project available. It's quite remarkable.